head spaces of being decayed, if you will, by virtue of going through this education process. I describe myself as an education-enabled SKP, and I say that to say, and to connect the dot to a point made by James Baldwin, that the paradox of education is this, that the person who is being educated in a given system to now turn around and critique that very system. And so what we need for those persons to understand, and I had a bit of an exchange earlier this morning with one of my friends on um, social media Mm -hmm. about the squatting situation, Mm -hmm. and he's him making the same very point about lazy people want other people land and Mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And I said to him that, you know, you really and truly need to bone up on your history. Mm-hmm. And I say that to say that what we really want is for persons to know, get education. It is education of a particular type, decolonization of the education system, mm-hmm. education for consciousness raising. Mm-hmm. And this takes me to this bit of African wisdom that say, I don't use the term African proverb, mm-hmm. I use African wisdom mm-hmm. that says those who know must teach. And so we need to lead our people out of the darkness Mm -hmm. and for persons to appreciate that the education that we have gotten is one that is steeped in uh, favorability to the oppressors and so we must wise up. And that is why there is this statement that says that first we learn to read then we read to learn. Mm -hmm. We must Mm -hmm. take the skills that we have gotten, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. We must take those skills, but we must not use them for the advancement of those who historically oppressed us. Mm -hmm. We must use them now, turn them inward toward our people Mm -hmm. for their empowerment. And that is why I regard myself as being an education-enabled SKP to now be on this mission. This book is meant to be a tool of empowerment and enlightenment. And it is. It is. All of that and more. All of that and and more. I want others to do the same. I want to... to Use social media different spaces. Yes. There is no excuse in this information age to be ignorant. We just five minutes to go. Let me just throw it to, to, to ask Joma who wants to pose a, a, a question or I'll make a comment. Go ahead, Joma. Yes, Doctor. I, I have to admit, you know, I'm a, I think I'm an education enabled escapee as well. Um, with the, with that thought process, um, I, I'm reminded of Doctor Leonard Jeffries, and he's always talking about a systems analysis. And yes. the only people who can analyze systems are people who have been educated, which is pretty much what you are saying. I, I would really ask: Are, are you thinking about? creating a book that actually defines systems in a child's term where it's, it's reading that's easy for children and adults so that those adults who might not have graduated from high school or college can understand or understand systems because it's systems that we're really uh, at challenge with, not even the individuals. So I'm, I'm just asking that question. Are you thinking about that in your next uh, presentation? Just quickly to say that you have hit the nail on the head in terms of reiterating that it is the systems that we need to analyze and appreciate. Uh, as Kabu mentioned, mm-hmm. the book, this book and the other volumes are written in such language as to be accessible to any student who, you know, is literate and able to read. I do not regard myself as having competencies in writing for children, you know. (laughs) And I've made the point that persons should act within their domains of competence and influence. What I'm hoping, though, is that adults who read this book will read it with their children and to have that inoculation of consciousness in the children very early. In the case of my own daughter, I had an, my own curriculum at home, if you will. The formal education system simply complemented my own curriculum that I had at home for her. Yes. So I'm calling on the adults, you know, to be the ones who are influencing the younger generation in the direction of 
consciousness raising that we want them to, to go. And finally, Dr. Ivy, because we're going to ask you to come back next week um, because we want to go through the prescriptions. One of the things that you have done in the book, which is brilliant for all of us, is that on every topic, you uh, you have your recommendations, you have the prescriptions. I like that you that you entitled this one prescriptions. I've gone through them, and I I, I want to say to our listeners, please come back next week and um, let us talk about the prescription. But you also touched on health, and I have just half a second um, to, to, to 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 go there. As um, when you talk about classism and 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 the and the two Jamaicas, just preempt that for us because that's what we're going to pick up next week when we come back. If you are available, well, if you're poor, you go to KPH. If you are rich, you go to Twenty Two at the wing at the UWI. Let us leave it right there because that's exactly what it is. Um, join us next week to hear some more about that and also the prescriptions um, that Dr. Ivy um, has laid out in, 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 a, in, in really um, simple terms but deep analysis to say that he has looked at this deeply, not just critically but deeply and has given um, some prescriptions that we'll go through. Dr. Paul Ivy, you are a treasure, my brother. Thank you so much. Indeed, my sister, thank you for the opportunity. I'll to continue. I'll make myself available. Avitora is certa. That's Dr. Paul Ivey. Um, thank him so much. Uh, Ras Joma, a lot to unpack there. A oh, whole lot. Sunday school tough today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I once again say to our listeners, get the book. Get the book. You know, uh, Jamaica Paradise and Paradox. This one are two volumes, you know. Uh, but start with volume one now. Start with volume one. Uh, don't think you have to just go and get all of it, uh, you know, all of them. He's, he's, he's a prolific writer. There are a lot of books out there. Start with volume one, Jamaica Paradise and Paradox, because he has put into perspective, Dr. Ivy has, um, Jamaica's current situation, situated it historically, um, uh, political history, economic history, social history, properly um, situated, analyzed, and then the prescriptions are given. I didn't write the book, but probably one of my first trips here, first or second trip in the early 90s. And I would go back home and tell people who have never come to Jamaica that it's a land of extreme opposites. I've never been in a place where I've seen homes that are more stories in the airport and right next door is there's someone living under those two pieces of zinc with the pieces of wood, uh, you know, holding up. I, I've never and seen why that. Have we, and how come we, we, we have bought into the status quo? How come we have bought into this reality of what we have become and what we are becoming? We haven't touched on scamming. Scamming uh, came out of this inequality, you know. Scamming came out of this colorism, classism, tourism in Jamaica, you know. It came out. It, it, it's, it's, it's a grandchild of, 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 of all of that. Uh, and, and so where we are is where we have primed ourselves to be it is a shame that in our 60th year, we are not even dealing with these issues. As a matter of fact, the current government, I'm telling you, under the JLP, we're seeing a whitening of all the boards in Jamaica. The, the, the Andrew Holness-led administration is presiding over the whitening, both skin color whitening and mental whitening of the Jamaican, uh, um, of, of, of the Jama of the Jamaican society. Uh, this is where we are. It is a sad situation, but this is where we are 60 years after. And if we are content to just celebrate 60 years as they define it to us, then it's going, it's going to be tough. Thank you so much for joining us inside of the Africa Forum. You'd have heard by now that the police have launched a criminal probe into the early morning explosion uh, yesterday at the Scotiabank automated teller, the ATM machine on Harbour Street in Port Antonio, Portland. Boy, that is scary. Um, really scary. Uh, the, we understand um, that one man has been hospitalized after he was found with cuts, burns, a broken leg and other injuries in an incinerator at the rear of the bank. The explosion, which happened around 4 o'clock um, yesterday in the morning, actually, damaged the ATM and the entrance to the banking hall. Shattered glass was found up to 60 feet away. Commanding officer for the Portland Police Division, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, has said that a high-level probe is being conducted by several entities. I don't know if you heard about that, Ras Joma, but that, that's really scary. Yeah, I heard about it, and I was a little confused. I didn't know if it was 
maybe a blow up to get into the bank or was the machine maybe blowed up and hoping that money wouldn't be blowed up in an explosion I didn't we still don't know I okay saw, I thought it was just me <laughs> no we, I am as confused as you are I was asking everybody what do you know I called Shamara and later in the night I said Shamara what do we know and she says, well, all we know is that they found somebody at the back and that they're investigating. But, you know, we don't have a whole lot of information of um, what really happened. But uh, we're following this one. I'm, I'm thinking, well, it's just four o'clock in the morning. Um, if this had happened at a, at a um, you know, well, it was a Saturday, wasn't it? But, but in any case, when people passing right. or pe- more people, that, that could have been something really serious. Why would ATM machines blow up, though? Uh, you know, I, I suppose we can speculate, but this sounds like a terrorist attack. <laughs> um, it's true. It, it, it sounds, you know, really weird because it's not just one; it's two. You uh-huh. know, and and people don't have to be standing and shouting in 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 tongues from um, the so-called Middle East, you know, for there to be a terrorist attack on right. that, you know. Um, I know. I noticed in, in the United States when um, they don't say it's terrorism unless the person who is conducting the mass killing is using the Arabic tongue. Yeah, it's very yeah. selective activities, yeah. even with more extreme definitions of like raiding your capital and mm-hmm. arming. And you know, I, I've, yeah. I've you know just speaking on January sixth, I've heard some inside reports of what people actually were doing there. Mm-hmm. And if black people had thought about doing things like that, we would be, as they say in America, under the jail. Yeah, worse if you were saying Allah Akbar. Yeah, uh, you might have heard that a planned visit by the son of the Queen of England and his wife, the Earl and Countess of Sussex, Sussex to Wessex, sorry, to Grenada has been postponed. This was postponed at the 11th hour. That was just one day before the couple embarked on their six-day Platinum Jubilee tour of the Caribbean. And obviously weeks after the grandchildren, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge um, did their... Um, their own controversial visit to the region here in Jamaica, we held a protest and, um, you know, 60 reasons to, to, to apologize and, and call for reparations and so on. So they, they, their Caribbean tour was a disaster for them. For us, what it showed us is that we are no longer just standing by and taking your crap. Uh, you know, we're standing up now and, and we've begun to do that. Uh, in, in Grenada, though, there has been no explanation for the late postponement and that Buckingham Palace has not said why. Only that there was consultation with the government of Grenada and that the Governor General advised them not, <laughs> not, to, not to go to Grenada, not to come to Grenada. I find it very, very interesting and I'm sure that you'll be interested in that also. So in this segment of the program, we hope to speak with Ambassador Arlie Gill, uh, Chairman of the Grenada National Reparations uh, Committee. Uh, interesting, Ras Jomo. Well, interestingly enough, um, I think that Africans in many areas are, are performing the ritual, the, the thought process of Sankofa. And uh, you, you have to give homage, you know, to leaders like Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who has um, replaced our minds with an African framework, an African reference, even in, in modern countries with modern governments. Um, where are we in this equation? What is our history? Where is our land? And where is our agenda for our sustenance? Let us see what Ambassador Ali Gill has to say to us about this. I, whatever it is, this is good news that they did not go to Grenada. Ambassador Gill, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the Africa Forum this morning. Good morning and, and thank you for having me. All right. We're very happy to, that you're here, Chairman of the Grenada National Reparations Committee. Uh, so we've been talking about the visit of the Queen of England, son of the Queen of England and his wife, uh, the scheduled vi- visit to Grenada, and that this has been postponed. All the reports that we're seeing have said that no reason was given, but that it was on the advice of the Governor General of Grenada to Buckingham Palace that they should cancel. What can you tell us about what you know of this cancellation? 
Okay. Well, well, two things. Um, recently, maybe within the last week or so, the Bank of England released some information with regards to the fact that the Bank of England once owned 599 slaves and two plantations here on the island of Grenada. Mm -hmm. That is in that is that information is exhibited in the Bank of England in England in um in London yes. as we speak, and so that came to light about a week or so ago. Right. Secondly, on learning that the royal family, members of the royal family, British oligarchs, were visiting Grenada, we of the Grenada National Reparations Committee, we wrote to the Queen, we wrote to the Governor General, sorry, asking for an audience with the royal, members of the royal family when they arrived to discuss the issue of reparations. Mm -hmm. Two things. We wanted to share with them the 10-point CARICOM plan with regards to reparations, and we wanted to make a presentation to them of the book just published by Professor Hilary Beckles, How Great Britain Underdeveloped the Caribbean. So they can read for themselves mm -hmm. the hard facts with regards to the exploitation of the Caribbean by Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And more so, on the heels of the information being made public with regards to the ownership of plantations and slave, and, um, and slave persons um, by the Bank of England. And now the Bank of England, of course, is owned by, is by, owned by Her Majesty's government. Mm -hmm. We thought it very topical to have that conversation um, with the Earl of Wessex and... Um, the prince and the and, and the and the countess of Wessex. Yes. Uh, yes, so, and the countess. So so what's interesting about this, um Buckingham Palace knows very well then why this was postponed. Uh, the 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 media because it, it, this is in the media that the information regarding the ownership of enslaved Africans by the Bank of England, meaning the Crown, and and also about the letter and the request by the Grenada. Uh, National Reparations Committee. But then the reports that we're getting, all of them, even the reports that are regurgitated here on the island in Jamaica, have said that uh, no official reasons. And, and, and basically, you'll get out of this, we don't know why. But this is sounds to me as if it's activism on the ground in Grenada. Um, do, is it? Do you can you can you comment on that? That this is really because of the the, 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 the activism coming out of the National Reparations Committee and maybe other of elements. Yes, talk to us about that of activism. And, 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 mm. and um, they were greeted by protest action in Saint Vincent and Grenadines this morning, which is uh, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes fly away from Grenada. They would have. They they know that mm -hmm. one the letter put them in a, in, a, in a tough place, within a rock and a hard place, as you see here in Grenada. For them to say no to us, it means that they were avoiding the conversation and reparations on our shows. Mm -hmm. For them to say yes to, yes to us, the discomfort that they had in Jamaica, when Prime Minister Hone spoke about republicanism and, and Jamaica looking to strive out on its own, mm -hmm. that discomfort would have, would have been exceeded by us Speaking to them with regards to reparative justice here in Grenada. So, Buckingham Palace, as dishonest as they are, for centuries and since independence of the Caribbean islands in particular, they have avoided this issue of reparations. We, they, they, we got our independence and they did not compensate us one cent mm -hmm. for the years of exploitation, not just for the slave, Atlantic slave trade and slavery, but also for colonialism. For exploiting our, our, our resources here. And I believe that the discomfort that they would have had with regards to their response to that particular letter would have discouraged them mm -hmm. from coming to Grenada. Mm -hmm. But more than that, just like the other islands, we had also planned protest actions on their arrival. They would have, they would have known that or they would, they would have sensed that would, was part of the package um, in them coming to Grenada. Mm -hmm. Them coming to Grenada. Mm -hmm. The days when school children would lie in the streets mm -hmm. and wave flags and flowers mm -hmm. and, and sing God Save the Queen 
in the, when royal family visits the Caribbean, it, these, these days are long gone. These days are over. The hard reality now is that as, as an independent, as independent nation, as, as persons who are defining our own destiny and so on, reparation is a, is, is a topical issue. Reparation is a relevant issue. And as long as the monarchy in England, as long as the government of England first and foremost apologize, admit that the Atlantic slave trade and slavery were crimes against humanity, that they have committed genocide against the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean, and that they are prepared to make these wrongs right by compensating us pursuant to the 10-point CARICOM plan, because it's a very important that the listeners appreciate that we are not just simply asking for a check. You know, sometimes we speak of reparations and people yes. think, you know, we, we get in a... The check is in the mail. I want to, I want to pick up... Um, and, and online, Ambassador Ali yeah. Gill, Chairman of the Grenada National Reparations Commission, you'd have heard that a planned visit by the son of the Queen of England and his wife um, to Grenada had to be postponed. This was postponed because of activism on the ground in Grenada by the Grenada National Reparations Committee and the people of Grenada. Um, we're hearing also from Ambassador Gill that their visit to St. Vincent and the Grenadines was met with protest action this morning. I probably want to talk a little bit more about that. And of course, you know what happened when the Duke and his wife um, came here, the grandchildren came here to Jamaica. So, Ambassador, you, you want to, and, and let us go right there to look now at reparations and the 10 point claim that, that, that the Nas- Grenada National Reparations Committee, uh, you know, wanted to present. To, uh, to, 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 the, to the, the monarchy and their representatives when they came into, into Grenada. You're saying this is not just about handouts, and a lot of people have this misunderstanding. It's here on the island in Jamaica too, even with the work that has been done. So talk to us about what is it then that when we talk about reparations, are we talking about? Well, thanks for that. Well, yes, that, that is, a, is a misconception oftentimes when we speak about reparations versus the all we're asking for is a check from the the British government or something like that, but it's much more than that. Mm -hmm. One, the first point on the 10-point CARICOM um, reparation plan is a full and formal apology. We were heard from the, from in in the past, for instance, Spring Charles, speaking about regret, how they, you know, they regretted the the, the slave trade and slavery and they regretted the the, the past and so on. Mm -hmm. We do not consider that to be an apology. I think mm-hmm. persons listening to us understand that when you apologize, you accept that you have done something wrong mm-hmm. and, you're sin- and you're sincerely sorry for so doing. Yes. So a full formal apology is to begin with. Repatriation is a second part of our, our, our CARICOM 10 point plan, meaning that over 10 million Africans were kidnapped and brought here to the Caribbean. And for persons who are interested in going back to Africa and so on, we believe that these former colonial powers, they must foot the bill for persons who are interested. And we know for many years, the African, um, the Rastafarians have touted that particular subject with regards to repatriation. Of course. We're talking about an indigenous people's development program. The Kalinagos, the Arawaks, the Tainos, the persons, the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean who were slaughtered and um, extinguished and so on. There are still um, survivors of the indigenous peoples here in the Caribbean, in particular, for instance, the large Kalinago communities in Dominica. We mm-hmm. in Grenada still, still do have descendants of the Kalinago people. Mm-hmm. They have suffered a lot, and we believe that we must do more to um, enhance the livelihoods and living standards uh, of our indigenous population. In fact, the University of the West Indies, through the Cable Campus, have started this program of offering and, and making scholarships available to Kalinago people on the island of Dominica. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. Um, programs like that, we believe that the colonial, the colonial um, former colonial um, powers must, must, must be engaged with cultural institutions. Um, mm-hmm. You w- would appreciate that throughout Europe and the U.S. and so on, there are museums and so on of, 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 um, of the Holocaust. Of course. And the Jews have received tremendous um, compensation from Germany mm-hmm. um, for that period. We, in a way, 
envy the, the, the sort of reparative justice that the Jews would have um, enjoyed mm -hmm. from Germany. And we believe that that gives um, the European powers a, a sort of a pathway or, 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 or some sort of example of which they can follow yeah. in terms of reparative justice um, for us here in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Public health crisis, you, you would appreciate the diet. Of course. Um, in one of the legacies of, of slavery and slave trade, there is no, there is no um, two ways about it. The chronic disease of uh, high blood, hypertension and diabetes and mm -hmm. so on, that is, uh, that is prevalent. Um, yeah. in the Caribbean. And scientifically and, um, scientifically, scientifically shown to. This is well documented. So this is scientifically this is, shown yes. to as well. I, yes. just, I just tried to summarize. Mm -hmm. and I know mm -hmm. I don't have all the reviews. Yes, yes. But that's another issue. So we're right. talking about public health um, um, investment in our public health. Mm -hmm. We're talking about illiteracy eradication, education for, for people. African knowledge program, very important. Decolonize. Because when you look at CNN, and BBC and so on, Africa is portrayed in such a negative light that nobody want, nobody in the Caribbean sometimes wants to return to Africa. Mm -hmm. Only the negative things that are shown by Western media with regards to Africa. Yes. And we believe African knowledge programs uh, is, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Psychological rehabilitation. After 400 years and so on of slavery, slave trade, colonialism, uh, and, and white brainwashing, it is extremely important that um, if, as, as, as but Mali one song, one time sang. Mm -hmm. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but yourselves can free our minds. Words of more and more, Marcus Technology Gunn. transfer yeah. is another important area. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the last point on the CARICOM 10 point plan, debt cancellation. Yes. As you know, our economies are, you know, our economies, our economies are so bound up and so, We talk about we talk about trust in a sense with all yes. of these. Yes, go ahead. Financial debt with Western financial institutions, the IMF and the World Bank, and so on and so forth. Yes. We know that all of the preferential treatment that we once enjoyed, um, the small islands of the Windward Islands, with regards to Banana and Jamaica mm -hmm. as well, all of that has been eroded and taken away from us. Mm -hmm. And you know, even when we embark upon financial services. Um, sector here in the Caribbean, they are blacklisted from time to time and so on. Yes. So that all of these different issues are what is it we are speaking about in terms of preparative justice and what we would like to see yes. um, the former colonial powers do for us here in the Caribbean with regards to mm -hmm. wasting the lot of us here in the Caribbean as, 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 as the debt that they duty owe us mm -hmm. for all for the centuries. Of, 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 of slavery and colonialism. I would really like to congratulate the, the Grenada National Reparations Committee and the people of Grenada um, for achieving this feat. Um, you talk about flags that would, used to be waved and, and children would lie in the street. And these people would be welcoming our maids, um, you know, as if they, they, they have not created the worst, their ancestors haven't created the worst exactly. atrocity and, that they, and, and as if they are not benefiting you know benefiting um, uh, still from the atrocities created uh, 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 against African people. So that Grenada will go, this moment will go down in history. This moment is good for us. Uh, our ancestors are proud of us. And I'd like to say congratulations to the people of Grenada for that. Thank you so much. What is the conversation in the four minutes that we have left that is um, now happening in Grenada? Because I suppose there are some loyalist royalists there in Grenada. But what, 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 what is the, the, the national conversation around the postponement, the cancellation of this visit um, by the people themselves, as opposed to probably the government? I, I think generally, and, uh, you know, I, I think generally, Grenadians are, we are non-royalists. You, you have the exceptions, of course, but generally, um, our history has shown a track record of, of, rev of revolution. From yes. Henry Christophe, who took part in the Haitian Revolution, to... Eric Gary in the 1950s of course. to the 1979 Morris Bishop led um, Grenada Revolution. Grenada have always at some point in time in history has, you know, been, has rebelled basically. Mm -hmm. And um, right now the conversation, and we, we in the GNRC want to use this opportunity to further educate 
the, the, the proper way with regards to the issues of reparative justice. Right. As you know, uh, all of the CARICOM countries, maybe except Haiti, has functioning um, reparations committee. And we come under the umbrella of the CARICOM Reparations Commission that is led by um, Professor Hilary Beckles. Yes. But you will find that, as we just as we said earlier, when we speak of reparative justice and so on, persons just think about cash or think about money. So we are using this opportunity now to, to broaden the discussion on what reparations really entail. Mm-hmm. And I can say to you that right now the ground is fertile in Grenada for that sort of discussion. Of course. I mean, you follow the social media, you, social, you follow the radio calling programs and so on. I mm-hmm. believe now, more than ever, the issue of, re- of reparations is on the lips of every Grenadian when they speak. Mm-hmm. And um, although... From the GNRC, we would have loved to have the conversation with the Royal Family. We need that sit down. Yes. And for years, the monarchy and the, the governments of, of Great Britain and so on, you know, they, 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 they just as how they treat the Windrush mm-hmm. um, generation in England themselves, it is the kind of scant courtesy and disrespect. Yes. In a sense, they are treating this issue of preparation in a, in a very disrespectful way as well, you know. In the they, same way not, that we saw they, the. Not prepared Exactly, and we saw that too with the um, the, the grandson of the Queen when, when of England when he came in and with all that was happening around them in Jamaica, he still chose to when he spoke and obviously I know a prepared speech, a pre-prepared um, speech that he um, talked, uh, used the very same words that his, his father used, um, paltry, paltry yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. and, 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 and uh, uh, embarrassing to them and an affront to us. Uh, uh, you know, so so we saw the very same thing. So you are right about the disrespect and the fact that they did not turn up, that they chose to cancel as opposed to facing the people. Then that is saying a lot. But this is that is saying a lot, definitely. Yeah, this still is a gain for us. We welcome it, and we are all Grenadians this morning. Thank you so much, my brother, <laughs> Ambassador. Thank you so much. The struggle continues. A little continue. continue. A victoria is certa. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Present day. Present you morning. Too. You too. Oh, so we're seeing, uh, thanks once again to Ambassador Ali Gill, uh, good work out of, out of Grenada, uh, Ras Joma. Brilliant work on the, on the part of the Grenadians and the Grenada uh, National Reparations Committee for standing up. And the fact that they did not turn up, you know, is just as good for us, you know. We've got them on the back foot. It, it's interesting you know? also that, you know, I don't know if people are, are catching it, but even the next generation is in step with the concept of resistance and responsibility um, that others owe us and our ancestors. And I think that that whole reality um, has to really be uh, promulgated through our communities, um, you know, telling our story, taking our voices off of mute. You know, 2020, I think, has showed everyone things clearly. I pray that Africans accept what reality has showed us and and decide to move forward okay on code like Mm. a kwanzaa code making sure that we don't violate each other as we move forward exactly exactly um the the guardian is reporting and this is overnight that uh the when the queen visited saint vincent and the grenadines in 1985 she was met with a jamboree the Prime Minister presented her with a commemorative gold coin and residents lined the streets waving flags. During a trip to the Caribbean island nation on Saturday, her son and daughter-in-law have received a somewhat frostier welcome. After a red carpet arrival in the capital, Kingstown, to a steel band playing One Love by Bob Marley, the Earl and Countess of Wessex were confronted by protesters calling for reparations. And um, it's a long um, article, you can read it. Uh, The people have said, um, they're quoting what the people are saying in St. Vincent. One person said this was, this wrong was done against a sector of the human race by another. Let me take a quick break and come back. And um, like what's happening in in, 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 um, St. Vincent also, uh, Ras Jomo. (laughs) Well, I guess this consciousness is becoming contagious. I don't know if people are wearing your shirts or something's happening in the air. (laughs) Some mystic is in the air. Africans are kind of like on, on a, on a, on a single concept for progress and redressing Mm -hmm. you know what has happened to our ancestors as as a as a family not as just one island or one neighborhood we as african people are evolving into a higher age a new stage 
but we have to make sure that we're not distracted exactly. as we come closer to the table. We, and and, and, and what, what a thing. That's ha- look at what's happening in the Caribbean. It's a wave. It's a wave. And this is coming, uh, this is post-pandemic response, you know. This is who we are becoming again to now stand up for ourselves and against oppression and against slavery and enslavement and those who are perpetrators of that cruel tragedy of the Mafia. This now is showing us who we can be, that it is people power that's going to make the change. Now, um, the Guardian says, uh, Aishida Jackson was among the crowd and they're quoting people. One person says that she came out to show her disgust and disappointment for those who over 400 years had to suffer for the slave master's whip. Another person said this was wrong. This wrong was done against a sector of the human race by another and this wrong must be compensated. Another one says it's a shame that a so-called progressive government would be using our people as a prop to entertain members of the royal family and there has been no conversation about reparations. And another said, th- this is a Guardian, the UK Guardian reporting this. You know. They hunted us down, they kidnapped us, they stole us, they worked us, they owe us and they must pay now. The protest, the Guardian says, are the latest controversy to mar the recent royal visits to the area. And uh, they go on to talk about what happened in Jamaica uh, and so on. So this is, this is what they're facing. And uh, it, it, this is as clear as day to them whether or not the colonial governments in place want to acknowledge it, that the people are rising up from the bottom and they are demanding not just reparations, but that you sever ties, you sever ties with the monarchy. This is where we're at. This is what we're about. And this is what has to be done. Are our students allowed to maybe ask the teacher for assignments? I know that normally doesn't happen in class, but I'm raising my hand now. Something is kind of brewing in my spirit. Uh, in the in the month of um, August, the fire month, you know, the hottest you know time, the the the, the sign of Leo. As many people are thinking about, you know, emancipation days and things of that nature. And independence. And independence. What about a, what about a class assignment that as we talk about emancipation that we, we attach reparation as a homework assignment? Because none of us would be celebrating, celebrating emancipation or any Juneteenth for those listening in America mm. unless we were enslaved in the first place. Yeah. We are not slaves. We were enslaved. People did this to us. And this celebration really shouldn't have taken place if everyone was fair on the human stage so we need to be repaired from from those realities in all forms mental physical spiritual even our relations with each other economic <laughs> yes yes you know, i'm going there of course there, of course you know? uh so we're going to go to the next segment of the program now where uh we want to speak with colonel michael grizzle of the trelawney town flagstaff moon community and Colonel Wallace Sterling of the Moortown community in Portland, Maroon community. And uh, this is against the background, as we were discussing earlier, of uh, the apology that was made by Gamma Gloria, uh, Mama G, Gloria Sims. We, for those who don't know, and you might have missed it, we spoke with Gloria, Sister Gloria Sims, uh, last week about this apology. She said she felt she had to to do this at this time. Uh, we have heard one response so far, which is Colonel um, Chief Curry, Richard Curry, of the Akampong Maroons, and he has come out to say that um, he's not in agreement with the uh, the, the apology. Uh, I, I know it's in the papers, so I probably could... Um, we did call Chief Curry to get his uh, response. He told us that he's not available for this morning. Uh, so we're standing by to speak with Colonel Michael Grizzle, Chief Grizzle, and Colonel Wallace Sterling, and um, to get their response uh, on this. As we stand by for that... Let me go back to some Peter Tosh and uh, let me try and access also the response in the newspapers from Chief Curry. 
All right. So this article, interestingly enough, seems to be written by, it says Andrew Clunis. So that's my brethren, Andrew Clunis. I'm very credible. So let me read this. It's in the Observer. It says, the Maroon apology for their role in uh, crushing slave rebellions and forcibly returning went away. Um, Andrew, may I have a talk? We'll stop. We'll stop saying slave long time. Now we're saying enslaved Africans. All right. Stop um, returning uh, runaway enslaved Africans to British owned sugar plantations is not supported in full by Colonel Lloyd Latibodier of Scots Hall Maroons. Um, this quoting Latibodier here. Um, interestingly enough, um, we did try to get Colonel Latibodier also. We were told that he was overseas. And I see that you you managed to reach him, uh, Andrew. So, and you've written about this. So you say personally, uh, Colonel Latibudio says um, personally, I would ask for forgiveness rather than issue an apology because what the Maroons were doing was what they agreed to. They were tricked, and it has caused a rift between the Maroons and the rest of the African community for over two hundred years. Colonel Latibudio told the Jamaica Observer. He was responding to the apology issued by Queen of the Maroons, uh, Gamang Gloria Mama G. Sims, issued on Good Friday and reported in last week's Sunday Observer. Uh, so this is uh, coming from the Scots Hall Maroons, and that's Colonel Latibo uh, with the so, 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 so you see, well, we're standing by for, for Colonel, um, for Chief Grizzle and Colonel Sterling. But so this is coming from Latibo Deer, and it, and it is in the in the newspaper. So he said that he would ask for forgiveness on behalf of um, uh, his ancestors rather than issuing an apology. Kind of semantics, you think? Or does it make much, does, is, does it make much sense to well, you? It's, it's semantics, but I also would hope and would leave room that that's one side of the communication. And I think that when we have apologies, when we have admissions of wrong and we do it redress, I believe that both sides need to be able to come to the table and share their truth. Yes, um, it still is a matter of just commensality. All right, not quite sure what's happening. If you let me know uh, what's happening with the... with. Uh, Chief Grizzle and Colonel Wallace Sterling, we're standing by to talk to. In the meantime, let me just quickly give a shout out to Russ I and I of Grants Pen uh, by way of Portland. Good morning, Russ I and I, providing his community with natural, organic foods, jelly, coconut roots, and positive lyrics. Um, when I left here last week, Sunday, we hit the road by the highway and in no time, meet up with my brother in Jawari. Good morning, Jawari Akhenaten, who ensured that we got uh, the jelly, coconut, right, and uh, the jelly water, and, um, and the rest of it. And us, I and I, you know, who uh, do good works in a grand spin out there. Greetings, my brother. Greetings. Also, uh, when we went to the uh, th- that protest when the, the grandchildren of the Queen of England were here and we were out there at, um, in front of the British High Commission. We met a brother called Kanuka. No, All right, I'll go back to Kanuka in a while, but Kanuka did ask me to find out what his name means. And Kanuka, if I don't come back to it, it means gold and it also means gift. But I'll come back to it if I get a chance. So going to the phone lines now, where. Our brothers are standing by, I think. Um, Chief Grizzle, are you there? Uh, Colonel Sterling? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay, greetings, Colonel Sterling. Um, you're, you're in Motown. Yes. I'm hearing you still anyway. Okay. All right, so I'm hearing you loud and clear, just that there is a disturbance on the line as usual. Um, cause, and then I'm, I'm not quite sure if Chief Grizzle is there. Chief Grizzle, are you there? All right, so I'm not yeah. to... Chief Grizzle? Uh, Marky. All right, so I'm not quite sure if Chief Grizzle is there, but, the, but Colonel Sterling, um, let me start with you then, um, just to say that, all right, so you, obviously we've been talking about, about um, the apology tendered by uh, Gamang Gloria Sims. Uh, I, I want to... Yes? I, I'm, not, I'm not hearing you too clearly. Gonna, you know, Are you hearing me any at all? 
I am hearing you, yes, but not All right. clear enough. So I am not going to ask you, I am not going to do a long question. Let me just say to you, respond yes. to the, what is your response to the apology given by um, Mama, Mama G? Okay, first of all, let me say that um, as a body, as a Maroon um, Secretariat, why call? We have taken our position on the whole matter of any apology. We have stated clearly before that what is needed is a sit down and have some sort of reconciliation discussion. Because if we, if Maroons are to apologize to anybody, we are asking ourselves a question then who are those that are going to apologize to us as Maroon who were involved in fighting against our ancestors when they were fighting to liberate others? So the whole thing is my response and the simple response is that any form of sit down discussion, we are open to that. But as far as it goes to apologies, we don't know about that as yet. We know about the sit down having some reconciliation discussion. That's what we know about. All right. And one thing I want to say about that is that I have had many conversations with you, uh, Colonel Wallace Sterling, about this, and this is what you have always said. So nothing yeah. has changed in terms of what you have said to me many, many times over the years, that you're willing to have this sit down, willing to have this reconciliation. It has to be done um, with unity. Um, uh, yeah. Chief Grizzle, are you there, Chief Grizzle? I'm having my sister. I'm having some discussion on the line. Okay, I'm hearing you, though. Good to hear you. Um, your, your, your response to the apology? Um, my story is that... Um, as Maroons, I think that um, we, I could not apologize on behalf of my ancestors who made this treaty. I would not, up, I would not, we not apologize for us coming from the Nile Valley, coming through the Sahara Desert and we were staying for 800 years. I would not apologize for us fighting even with the British for over 100 years until 1738. I, 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 whatever is there, what we look forward to now, to going forward. Um, we are Africans, we are all Africans. We have clause, the ninth clause in our treaty, our 1739 treaty, that speaks to returning and slave Africans or, 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 the, or, or the, um, the seventh clause which, which talks about uh, that we are the authorities to suppress. We are the, the, the general populace of even Jamaica or the world should understand that we Africans were on this island creating five Maroon communities that were free communities, and we were actually, even before the British came in 1655, we were actually the protectors of this island. So, 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 so whatever is there, is there. What we look forward to is to going forward, because what has happened is that society or colonial mind thinking people are very adept. In divide and rule strategy. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think, okay. Chief Grizzle? Yes. Chief Grizzle, um, yes. and and you have been in the studio with me here many times. I've come down there, and we have had many conversations about this issue also. So I know where you're coming from. But do you think? And I've I've had this conversation, and I've asked you before. Do you think? As um, Colonel Sterling is saying, that there is need for a sit down for commensality for reconciliation. Yes, but I'm sit down with who? Um, with the general populace of, of, um, of Jamaica when I think maroon blood runs deep in everybody. Um, the word maroon, I, I think that is even a derogative word. I'm an Ashanti or Paramanti or coming out of, of, of Africa. We are all Africans. So if we want to come together to discuss the treaty in its entirety, I, I, and there cannot be any reconciliation between what was done already done already. I, I am yet to see an original copy of what was there. I, um, I, 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 I would say, yes, we can come together with, with the people like yourself or Muta Baruka or all the Marine leadership. What I look forward to today for is for all the Marine Turners to come together in one accord first before we issue anything outside. Um, we, we cannot be doing things within our community individually. We have to really show Jamaica that we can come together. We do not want what happened over in the Blue and Janko Mountain, happened over here in the country, that we, the Maroons, because of this division, our, our sovereignty is threatened. We are now being, being, being branded as traitors, 
with the when we had shed our blood just the same. But in my community, I have a, there's a place in my community called Tati Bong, where, where legend has it that Tati was hiding out in, over here with us as a tsunami down the road. I, I mean, this risk between us, it, it, it is good, as Sir and Stern would say, for, for a sit down and talk with, with, with anybody who wants to come to talk about what happened before. I would not stand here as I say and apologize or, or ask for forgiveness for, 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 for us being who we were protectors of the island. All right, let me go. Let me go. To, let me go to um, Colonel Sterling. Colonel Sterling, um, one of the one of the things obviously coming out of this is um, the position of Mama G herself. I was there, as you know very well, because you were there when she was installed um, at Charlestown. Uh, and so, uh, what, sorry, how... Sorry about, sorry about that, Cabo. I, I just, I missed part of what you have said. I, I want to talk now about Mama G's position within the Maroon Council and how, and, and, and to what extent is the position of... Uh, um, the Paramount Chief or Queen of the Maroons, to what extent is this recognized by the Maroon Council? Um, you see, the thing about it, you know, that we have we have a secretary, right? And if anybody decides to bestow anything upon Mama G, like the people from Suriname did, that, mm. that's what the people from Suriname did. We didn't have any opposition to that. In terms of appointing somebody as Paramount Chief Senator or something like that, we haven't done that yet. I don't know that we will do that, and that is not something that we have done. But that is not to say we are going to be in any opposition to anybody who wants to say they are this or they are that. Yes, yes. But, 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 Colonel, but, Colonel, but Colonel Sterling, like Colonel Sterling. And, and the person did not ask for it, Yes, and the person did not refuse it. Right, but look here, Colonel Sterling. But this this installment of Mama G took place at Charlestown under um, when 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 Lumsden was was chief, Colonel Lumsden. Um, yes, I, I yes. know you were there. I was there. All the Maroon chiefs were there. I think yes. um, Colonel Grizzle, Chief Grizzle, you were there too, right? Yeah. No, I, but I am saying that that yes. was something that was done by the Maroons of Suriname. We did not oppose it. If they see fit to do that. Fine, we don't have a problem with that. We don't we don't throw out Mama G. Mama G is still a part of us. Mama G as, is a woman and she's free to make her views and her opinion knows wherever she goes. That is her. And we can't take that away from her. And we are not saying that she shouldn't. But what I'm saying is that as a Maroon Secretary, as a white cut, we have not appointed anybody as a paramount chief or chief honest. We never did that. So if you know people are saying so then fine with them. Then just, uh, we, don't, we don't make a fuss about things like that because we know what we have done and we know what we will do and how we go about doing things. That's as simple as it is. All right. So we, yeah. w- w- what, what, what Mama G has done, um, uh, um, Chief Grizzle, is that she has placed the... It's, it's, it's an ongoing issue, right? And she has, she has placed it front and centre. Um, so what, where do, as Maroon chiefs and, and leaders um, within the Maroon communities, where do you go from here? What next? What, what, what will you do from here? I, 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 think to, I think to my sister that um, if um, an individual who advocates for Maroon um, wants to speak on behalf of their opinion, but not speaking on behalf of, of all Maroon across Jamaica, <laughs> I think where we go from here, and I hope that Colonel Sterling, um, with um, with Colonel Lucky Body, Colonel Douglas, um, and Colonel Sorry in a Sampson Town, can 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 formulate a unified way of moving these communities forward, of helping to, to develop our communities, of um, going forward in true protection, in, in, in creating our own manifesto. It includes our own contribution plan for our, our protected year that we are fighting for to, to, to put in place mechanisms that we are now moving forward with one voice and not um, one person speaking on behalf of every person without consultation. I, 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 and I look forward to further serving as a secretary and so forth in, in all 
um, leadership visiting each other, coming to one table, formulating one unified force, and, and going forward in the development and preservation of, of, of our rich heritage and our culture, in the same time assisting to developing our people. Right. Uh, you know, yes, go if ahead. I may say, if I may say something here, Kabu. Yes. That we have had a lot of meetings, right? Why call meetings? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Chief Grizzly was not here to participate, you know. But now that he's here and he can participate in it, he will get a full, a full some understanding of the things that we have discussed and the, 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 the plot that we have laid out, the course that we want to charter to go forward. And okay. it is all about unity, it is all about having everybody in the discussion and the whole question of whether, whether any perceived wrongs that the Maroon would have, have, might have done is something that I think that the historians over the many years have not really put our history in its proper perspective in teaching it to the young ones. So right. we, will do, we, will be, we are prepared to do that, to let people understand what happened back then and why it is that we are in the position that we are in. Because one of the things that we have to be very careful of, if we insisting on that the Maroons should apologize for wrong, then what we are doing, we are letting the British off the hook. We are all this uh-huh. question about, all this question about reparation will be like, you know, a pipe dream. If we do not stick to the narrative, if we do not do, and all the, the persons that are guilty of such atrocities, if we don't bring them to the negotiation table, if we don't get the British there, any argument about reparation is, uh, we have the Duke here, what did he do? What have he said? What can we get from them? Mm-hmm. If, if Prime Minister Britt was here, David Cameron, what have you said? What, have, what can we get from them? Mm-hmm. These are the persons who were responsible. The royal family of England, their ancestors, ancestors were really responsible for the, 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 the trading place. Mm-hmm. What can we get from so them? I hear you, so I hear you, so I hear you, so I hear you, Colonel Sterling. So, Colonel Sterling, I hear you saying, and you said it yeah. at the beginning, and I think I'm hearing the same thing from, from um, Chief Grizzle, yeah. that this is a family matter, right? Yeah. That has to be discussed uh, among family, and that um, and, uh, through a process of reconciliation. Now, um, you know, that, that I understand, and that I take on board, and, and I've already taken on board. This is something that we have had many, many conversations about. Yeah. At the moment, at the moment, is there, because we hear and the reports coming out in the newspapers, right? Um, and, on some, and on some news, um, newscasts outside of IRFM, FM, um, suggest that there is a paramount chief position, chief position within the Maroon community. Is there, is, is there such a position? There posi- is no paramount chief position in the Maroon community as such. Every chief is a chief, and he or she, uh, whether you're a chief or chief, and it is in your own right, in your own community. We have not, as a body, elect anyone that to say that you are the chief of IRA or any, for anybody else. That has never taken place, and I don't know that it would have taken place anyway. So, so anybody who is saying so, that they are free to say what they want to say, the reality on the ground is a quite different thing. Mm-hmm. So nobody, uh, you make no sense nobody try to put yourself up and say, well, you know, I yes. am paramount chief, I am, I am responsible for it. Right. You know, so, so, we haven't done that. Yes, I know that you have not done that. Colonel, Colonel, Colonel um, Chief Grizzle, um, Colonel yeah. Sterling just said that you have not been present at, at a lot of the meetings. Um, also, in a lot of the reporting over the last few months, I have heard um, reports talking about four maroon communities. Um, in my, in my um, experience and covering uh, maroon Arch in Jamaica and the maroon communities in Jamaica, I know that there, there's five. Now, why is it that your community has been left out of the, the, the narrative and why haven't you gone to any of the meetings? I think it has not been actually left out. I think because of like, I've been struggling a lot. But at the same time, um, I think back in, we were in Kingston when I, when I was seated on, on the on the Secretariat um, in Kingston with Colonel Sterling and all. Um, but there has not been a correspondent to me personally when, um, when there's meetings being held so I could uh, make myself available. Um, the, the issue of my community, yeah, and that is why I'm a chief and not a, and not a colonel. The thing is that um, we chill on its own flagstaff and, and it's being lost in the annals of history. I think in 2016, 
that I um that I, that, that I that I am brought up to appreciate because of the artifacts being found and using the community to bring out um, the geographical location um, of this town. So, I, and I think um, we turn a long term, turn a sterling, um, the turn a thing, um, now we turn a story um, that, that I've always had this uh, conversation with, um, within the Coptic country of extending our borders and preserving our heritage. So, my community is actually a community that, um, that was actually given, given away, you see. And for, for, for the work that I've done within that community in highlighting its significance to, to, to maroon areas and, um, and also to take back the land. And I think we have done, we have put in 22 years of work um, to, to highlight what's there. We have used um, the history of the community to formulate such a tourism and whatever to bring out the natural history. And I think that's where my place comes. Uh, are you are you still uh, are you still the chief of the Trelawney Town Maroons? The chief of the Trelawney Town Blackstar Maroons. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Just wanted to know that. Um, Colonel Sterling, let me just thank you so much once again. Thank you so much, Chief Michael Grizzle. As I said before, we did invite um, Chief Curry. Uh, my producer, Shamara Preston, did get him on the phone. He said he was not available this morning. We didn't get to Chief um, Lati Badir because we understood that he was um, traveling. But we are seeing a report written by Andrew Clunis in The Observer this morning in which he says that he doesn't agree with the apology. He would have asked for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now, um, Colonel Sterling, just before you go, what your thoughts on that? He would have asked for forgiveness. Um, do you agree with that? That's, um, Chief, Colonel Latibodier has said, according to the reporting in the newspaper this morning, that yeah. he would not have asked for an apology. But he says, if an apology is what is needed for us to seal that wound and move on, let's do that. Right now, he says, it's a matter of recognizing our culture. We need to acknowledge that the Maroons did some great things for the first freedom of people. He says, yes, they did some wrongs, but they had started the fight and gave our leaders the courage to fight. How do you respond um, to what Colonel Lantibodeo says? Until, until I see the article, mm-hmm. then I think I don't have any response. But it suffice to say that, that our position that we have taken... Is if there need to be some sit down, have some discussion to put everything on the table because if an apology is to be made by anybody, it is an all round thing. And what we are doing in, in dwelling on this thing and not sitting down and discussing it properly, we are strengthening the hand of the colonizer, the British, in the whole question of rep- reparation. We are telling them we, the Africans, are the ones that are guilty of our own demise. And they are not, they don't have anything to do with it because we were always complicit in what happened. So I, therefore, I am urging those who are asking for apology and stuff, have some sit down, put it in on the table, have a proper discussion, and then we can go forward with the, with the matter of preparation because we know that the British and, and, we, and, we, and, re, and reconciliation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Colonel uh, Sterling. Thank you so much, uh, Chief, Chief yeah. Giz- okay, Gizzle. I can just, I can just say, Mark, okay, that, um, that, that look more deeper into our story because the people without the knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. Yeah? All right. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you so much. Looking thank forward you, to seeing you both soon. Okay. Yes. All right. Aquaba. Uh, Aquaba. Uh, Aquaba. All right, so um, in a way, the, 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 the two colonels are making the, the same point that you made this morning, uh, Ras Jomo. Sorry. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that, it, that it's very important that, that we are becoming sensitive uh, to each other's hurts and uh, any, any misdeeds that might have been done. And I just uh, I, I put in the air that we make a healing space for family to heal. And let's go deal with the other ones right after. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can't say that I disagree with that. that, that and, and, and I that hear that we spirit. Need cre- we need yeah. to create that yes. healing space. Of course. And one of the things that I've said here in the space all the time, it's commensality. When the elders call the people 
of the community to eat together is not because they don't have food at them house, but because this is important in the community, for, for the community, for the development of the community, for the health of the community, for the spirit of a community. I was talking about a brother that I met at the protest earlier, Kan- Kanuka. And Kanuka, you said your name was spelled K-A-N-U-K-A, I think. I found two spellings, right, K-A-N-U-K-A and K-A-A-N-U-K-A. And um, it means part of gold, part, P-A-R-T of gold. It also means gift. So it's a lovely name. <laughs> it's a lovely name. He said he just gave it to himself, you know. Well. Yes. There's some spiritual things that are yes. taking place as well. And, and this consciousness call has been maybe in our ears for a few hundred years. And yes. I think that, you know, I, I tend to look at maybe this, this coronavirus. I know that there's a lot of different realities that have happened. But in short, this reevaluation of our own time and our own space, I think that for African minds that have spent time getting closer to each other, I, I think that this reset might have something very important for, for African people. This is, where, this is it. We're in a post-information <laughs> age. We're in the post-pandemic age. We're in the post-truth age. But believe me, it is our time. And this is a time to rise. It's a, it's a spiritual time for us, too, you know. And I know you say you don't want to go spirituality in this circus. People think Bible. We're not, we're not thinking religion. We're talking about African spirituality. Yeah.